a key to metabolic health is keeping your blood glucose levels at a normal level. And important for that is the production and secretion of the hormone insulin from insulin producing cells in the pancreas. Once it's secreted, it has to act to lower blood glucose and it does that in skeletal muscle and adipose tissue. Recent studies have suggested that elevated levels of cholesterol within the cell, not in the blood, but within the cell itself, impairs both insulin secretion as well as impairs glucose transport into muscle and fat. Several recent studies have actually shown that alterations in a network of cholesterol metabolism genes are associated with type 2 diabetes risk. In fact, these alterations are alterations that would be expected to produce an increased level of cholesterol in cells. Studies we and other laboratories have done have shown in human muscle biopsies that increased cholesterol levels are associated uh, with decreased glucose disposal in, in humans. Um, so statins have been recognized as a class to have increased uh, risk for type 2 diabetes. Um, in cell and animal studies, one thing we've learned is that lowering cholesterol in cells um, has to be carefully controlled to normal levels. If you go beyond that in beta cells and or skeletal muscle and adipose cells, you also have a similar effect on impairing insulin secretion and insulin action. So it's conceivable that the effect of statins on increasing blood glucose could have something to do with the fact perhaps it's lowering cholesterol beyond a certain point in the cells. Alternatively, the main action of statins is to inhibit the rate-limiting enzyme of cholesterol synthesis, primarily in the liver, and this results in an upregulation of receptors for LDL cholesterol which is circulating in the blood. This leads to the removal of that cholesterol from the blood. Interestingly, studies have shown that statins can also upregulate LDL receptors in other tissues. In particular, the skeletal muscle, it can be increased five times greater than it is in liver. So it's possible that what's happening is we're actually adding the cholesterol from the blood into the cells where it's compromising insulin action and insulin secretion. Now, consistent with that, um, what is observed clinically is that it tends to be the higher potency and greater treatment doses and treatment durations that seem to cause a mild uh, risk in having uh, type 2 diabetes. Um, one exception to that is patavastatin, a newer uh, high potency uh, synthetic statin on the market. Patavastatin uniquely seems to enhance a process called reverse cholesterol transport. And that process uses the good cholesterol that we hear about in our blood, HDL cholesterol, which will travel around and remove excess cholesterol from cells, including muscle and fat cells and cells that produce insulin. So it increases this process by increasing the expression of um, a very important apolipoprotein called ApoA1, which is important for HDL generation. And it results in persistent increases of HDL in the blood. So it's very conceivable that it's maintaining cellular cholesterol levels at a normal level by just removing the excess cholesterol very efficiently. Another thing that's been observed both in cells and in human studies is that an enzyme that degrades HDL, uh, the levels of that are decreased in people that are taking patavastatin compared to other statins. So it's also prolonging the life of that HDL cholesterol. 